Shelly in the building. Ah. Hey, so before we even start, um, how you been doing? What's What's been going on with you? Been doing good. Um, just been out here over the road and... Um, you know, we we had to take a break uh, last October because my husband had a heart attack, and then we go back over the road this past June. So we had a little eight and a half month break. <laughs> yep. Well, okay. I'm 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 sorry to hear that. He he's okay. Is he? Yes, he's doing fine. He's driving again. So yeah, that's very good. That is very mm-hmm. good. Okay, so. First name first, Shelly with a C. Uh, <laughs> your moms must have said, hey, I want to be different. I want to name her with a C instead of an S. Yes, that's exactly right. That is exactly right. So when it be, when it, I was one of those kids that never got the name on a keychain because I could never find it. <laughs> I know, right? I, I can't never find my name on a keychain or on those little uh, license plates. It's always with a W instead of a U. And I'm like... I know. <laughs> I'm like, it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, so uh, crazy stuff is going on out here. And you just mentioned that your that your husband uh, had a heart attack. So... What happened? Mm-hmm. Uh, what 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 happened? Like, was he driving when he had it, had it, or you know, take take us back to what happened? It's quite good. You mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash this down? Go right ahead. Okay, so back in October of last year, um, we was in Arizona, and he was doing his post trip, walking around. And um, it was around Phoenix, Arizona, and he got stoned by scorpions. Well, sitting, um, we was going on home time to Mississippi, and so he was sitting the whole time. And then we go down to New Orleans on our home time, and that's when, you know, him sitting, that venom just lay dormant because he wasn't really doing any cardio at the time. And then um, whenever we went down to New Orleans, that's a lot of walking down there. And that's when that venom started acting uh, active in his uh, system. And he had a heart attack at home on home time. So he was not driving, which is good. And, um, you know, he he tried to leave Earth about five times. And that's when I finally grabbed the doctor and said, look at here. Something is not right. You need to fly some venom from um, Arizona to Mississippi and give him the antivenom. And that's what saved his life. Wow. Yep. So, so he got, yep. so did he, did he know he got stung by a scorpion? Yes, he did, but he didn't realize how, how bad it was going to be, you know? I mean, he's just like, oh, okay, I just got stung by a scorpion. Oh, well, you know, and then just went about his day. But I looked at the scorpion, and I was able to tell the doctors, look, this is a bark scorpion, not the kind of scorpions that we have in Mississippi. You know, this is a bark scorpion. It's very, very deadly. And so, I mean, he didn't have any tingling in his lips or nothing like that. Until we got home, and that's when his lips started tingling, and his hands started tingling, and stuff like that. And he's just like, "I think we need to go home," because we went to um, we went to New Orleans to attend the crew of Boo Fest, and we never got to attend it, so um, we went home early. And so he's just like, "My lips are tingling, my 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 tongue is tingling. I'm not feeling right. You need to drive home." And so, I mean, he never lets me drive, you know. And uh, whenever he whenever he asked me to drive, I knew something was wrong. And he just he just had this tightness in his chest, and he's like, "I'm not feeling good." And I said, "We're fixing to go to emergency room." And he argued with me. He said, "I'm not going." I said, "Well, let's call your mother." 
And whatever your mother says, that's what we're going to do. And thank goodness that we went to the emergency room because the doctor said we would have waited 30 minutes later. He wouldn't be with us. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. all this was going on on the trip back to Mississippi and you dropped him off at the hospital. Or was you already at home when he started experiencing these uh, episodes? It was after we had gotten home and we had went down to New Orleans to have you know, we had gotten home on home time, and then we went back to New Orleans on home time. And that's whenever he started experiencing all of that. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you took him to the hospital per help with his mother. Right, <laughs> so you exactly. Gotta, you got you to bring the mom in like, yo, I'm, <laughs> exactly. I'm, telling, I'm telling your mama <laughs> on you. Exactly. <laughs> that's you, what I did. That's what I told him. And That's then, exactly what I told him. Yeah, when you hear when you hear that, when you hear that, you'd be like, even at even at age fifty, even at age fifty four, somebody be like, I'm telling your mama, be like, oh man, come on, you don't have to tell my mama, please don't tell my mama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And thank goodness that mother persuaded him to go because if it wasn't for his mother, he probably would be dead by now. Uh, how long he was in the hospital, and and what was the recovery like for him? Oh, my goodness. Um, he was in the hospital for three months. And um, during that time, they were still uh, aggravating the COVID and everything. So we were like two hours away from where we were home. And I had to literally sleep in my vehicle. Because at a certain time in CBICU, there's no more visitors. And that was the hardest time because I had to leave the hospital and go sleep in my vehicle. Because I had no money for a room. I had no money for food. And, I mean, it was just real, real, real hard back then. Um, But I never left his side. Like... We were, I, w- I would sleep in the parking garage, but I never actually left the hospital. So that whole entire three months that he was in the hospital, I never once left his side unless I was made to. That's love right there. That was really there. hard. Yes. That's, mm-hmm. that's love right there. I, I, I commend you for that. That, that is love right Thank there. Thank you. You know, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people don't seem to understand, uh, you know, the modern times of what's going on right now with women and their high standards and all like that. Here you is husband in the hospital. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. hus- you, you ain't worrying about nothing but your husband in the hospital and sleeping in the car. That's right. I, commend, I mean, absolutely. I commend you. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. I mean, it was hard enough as it is to just go and sit in my car because, I mean, I, I mean, sleep. I could not hardly sleep, but whenever I did, I was so exhausted. I mean, it just happened, you know. But from all the worrying and everybody wanting to know what was going on, because, like I said, we were two hours away from home. You know, um, it was actually. When when he first got, I mean, when we first, when this first happened, and he had to have emergency stent put in in Meridian, um, fl- he was flown from Meridian, Mississippi, to Jackson, Mississippi, and I was, I had to drive the car, and I was going 80, 90, 110 all the way from Meridian to Jackson when I got pulled over, and I'm like, look, I can't. Stop. I have to go. My husband just had a heart attack and he was flown to Jackson in the, in the, and, uh, the dot, the, um, Howard Patrolman said, well, um, do you want to make it there in one piece or two pieces? And I said, I want to make it in one. He said, well, just follow me. And he escorted me all the way to UMMC so that I would make it there safely. I mean, that was a blessing in itself, you know, because I was scared for one that our vehicle wouldn't make it at the time. And to go 80, 90, and 110, 
was insane. I mean, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have ran that car that that hard if um, if something emergency wasn't happening. But I mean, I had to be by his side because I mean, he's always been there for me. You know, he's always been there where you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything. And um, I'll take care of you. Well, this was my time to take care of him, you know. And you you asked me what happened after the surgery and after he was released from the hospital, that recovery time. Uh, I become an Uber driver because, I mean, the bills don't stop once you have a heart attack. And something had to give. You know, I'm just so grateful for the company that he works for, for keeping him on the insurance so that he could still live. Because without insurance, he he wouldn't be here right now. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. You know, health care, the biggest issue, in my opinion, is insurance involvement. I, I I have like I have certain medicines that I need to take and I, I exactly. gotta fight I gotta fight with the insurance company every you know every three months for them exactly. to for them to pay for it. I mean I mean one particular medicine costs eight hundred dollars. And I'm exactly. like and 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 my insurance goes, Oh well we 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 got to make sure you this and make sure you that or is there any generic brand or something like that and I'm like man come on I am like this, exactly. this 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 is crazy all right man so, see, go ahead he he goes he goes from taking three medicines a day to adding seven more to his daily routine and the insurance is like why well um he had a heart attack and now he's dependent on this medicine. And it took me tooth and nail, fighting tooth and nail, while he was still in the hospital. And during his recovery, to fight tooth and nail for, for him to have the medications that he needed. But I did it because he needed it. You know, and, you know, everybody's like, you could have left. You could have left all of that heartache. You didn't have to worry about him. Yes, I did. He's my husband. I would do it all over again if I had to. You know? Wait, I, I don't want to. Wait, wait, but wait, I would wait, do wait, wait, wait. You 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 had people in your ear telling you to leave your husband? For real? Yes. They they were saying, Come on, you could just walk away from this and not even worry about it anymore. It's causing you so much heartache. And I'm like, I love this man with every ounce of my being. I'm not just going to leave him for for the dogs to have him. No, I, this is my husband. I'm, you know, I'm not going to leave him. So, yeah, I had people telling me, you know, you got to look out for yourself. And I'm like, I am looking out for myself. I'm looking after my husband. We are one in the eyes of God, so <laughs> if I'm looking out for him, I'm looking out for myself. So period the end. This so is, I had to drop those people. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. I, I do not blame you. I, ain't no way. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Somebody that, that, somebody that inconsiderate would get in my ear yes. to tell me, hey, you 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 could do way better for yourself and, and, and get somebody else and just, you know, let him oh, go. Yes. It was a situation like that that I actually seen that somebody actually said that in the air on uh on on um on uh YouTube. Uh I, I can't remember what it was, but this lady uh was saying that her husband was in the hospital, like literally in the hospital. And she's on this show looking for another dude to replace him. No. No. Mm -mm. no. She's she's on a dating she's on a dating show. Husband. She's on a no. dating show letting the host know, hey, my husband is in the hospital. I'm not sure 
if he's gonna make it a lot, but I'm I'm on here letting the world know that I that I I am available or will be available. Like, who I does know. that? So, what kind of man are you looking for? Um, well, how mean, old is your daughter? She's nine months. So, where's her father? What's going on with you guys? Um, he's in the hospital. So, yeah, he's been he's very ill. So, I'm looking for like a stepfather. Were y'all not together when he went to the hospital? Yeah, we, we're still together. Wait, okay. I'm looking for like, a, you know, just in case. A stepfather just in case. Just in case if he passes away? Right. Are you serious? Yes, Kendra. You have to have one in the chamber, Kendra. Come on now. But wait, shouldn't you be holding him down? No, an insane person, an insane person without a heart. That's the kind of person that does that. I mean, when he was in the hospital, I was there right by his side. They would have to tell me, okay, you need to step out while we do this. But as soon as they came back, I was right back by his side. And, you know, that what, what is so amazing is that the nurses would tell me, well, there's no response. There's no response. He's not giving us any kind of response. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He he responds to everything I ask him to do. And they're like, no, he won't. And I said, watch. And I said, watch outside the door because it was glass door in CBICU. And I said, will you squeeze my hand to let me know that I am here? And he would literally squeeze my hand to the point where it's almost breaking. Nurses and doctors were like, oh, my gosh. I said, if you want my husband to do anything, you call me, and I will let him do You know, he listens to me. And um, that was back then. Uh, my wedding ring was too too small to wear. And whenever he opened his eyes, he would look at my hand, and he's like, we're only half married. Because I only had one one ring out of three that I could wear. And he says, we're only half married. You need to go get the other set and put it on. So I had to literally wear my rings around my neck to let him know that we were fully married so that he would be happy. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I was I was there by, I mean, I never left him at all, never. And I, like I said, I would do it again because that is the love of my life right there. We've... I've loved this guy ever since high school, back in 1990. Yes. So I finally got him to marry me. <laughs> so I'm not letting him go again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So now so, so now you guys is back together. You guys is back on the truck. Uh, was you guys working yes. for the – was you guys working for the same company when, when all this went down? Um, actually, I'm just a truck wife. So I just went over the road with him, and th I mean that's my role in in this union together is I'm just the truck wife. What was the company uh, that y'all was that he was working for when 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 the situation came down when he had his heart attack? Um, he he's working with Ferrant. It is an extension of U.S. Express. Okay, okay, so he was so he was working with Variant all this time. So, I'm going to kill each and every one of you, and the only disappointment in it for me is that I only get to do it once. Right, mm-hmm. And this whole, entire, this whole entire time, Variant could have easily said, we can't, we can't keep him on payroll. We have got to let him go. And you, uh, Barrett was like, but if, I told him, if you let him go, then how is he going to survive without any insurance? Because once the hospital see that he has no insurance, they'll cut him dry. And then I can't have his medication. I can't pay for his cardiac rehab because he's not working. You know, um, how am I going to do this? How am I going to deal with all this? And and try and pay the bills, you know, and being an Uber driver, you do not make that much. And I was working the whole 12-hour shift. 
you know, trying to make ends meet because he was needing that cardiac rehab to be able to go back to work and to be able to pass the stress test. And so that whole time that he was at home, you know, recovering and getting better and getting stronger with his heart, I was working as an Uber driver trying to pay the bills, making the bills meet. So they finally understood that what once he got home, they finally understood, okay, yeah, he might need his medicine to continue to work. So, I mean, they could have let him go, but they kept him on payroll so that he could stay on the insurance. Okay. And I'm so grateful for that. Yes. So Variant came through in the clutch because... Wow, I I uh, I'm surprised that yeah I that mean, variant uh uh did that uh, and and you mentioned earlier that you guys was out for at least what eight months yes mm-hmm. and Var- and variant kept you guys on the or kept him on the payroll exactly. all that time. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, like I said, he came back in June. And even though it's been a struggle since he came back, we're still paying back that insurance that that he was off leave. But at least they worked with us to make a payment plan to get his insurance paid up so that if we... You know, if anything happens and he's like, I want to go somewhere else, at least we've paid him up in good in good standings, you know, and stuff like that. But we don't plan on leaving at all. Barrys is the elite of U.S. Express, and um, they treat us like family. Whenever, whenever his sleep manager calls, she'll say, okay, so how is Shelly with the C? because that's how I introduced myself. And how is VJ? Because my cat goes over the road with us, too. He's my service animal. And they're like, do y'all need anything? And sometime, one time I said, yeah, we don't have any money, and VJ needs litter and cat food. And they're like, okay, I'll advance you. And no, no questions asked. So this company that he works for is like, the best company I have ever dealt with. Wow. Personally. Wow. Barrett this knows is you by name. This, this is yes. variant. Wow. Variant. Okay. Where, U.S. Express. Where, U.S. Express only knows you is 539616. You know, and that's all they're worried about. But Barrett knows you by name and treats you like family. Where was the truck all this time? Oh, that was another issue in itself. Boy, 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 did we have a run-in with that. So the truck was at, when we go on home time, uh, we go and stay at Red Roof Inn and Meridian, you know, because, I mean, why rent whenever you're over the road basically living in your tractor? So the tractor was at uh Red Roof Inn, and they towed it to total in this, uh, in Jackson, okay? They told me, they said, you've got X amount of days, less than a week, right when he first had his heart attack, to come and clean out the truck. Well, I was irate. I couldn't even think. I didn't even know which way was up or down at the time. You know, and so I would go after the doors were closed, see CBICU, and I couldn't see him no longer that day. I went to Total, and I'm like, okay, I'm here to clean out my truck, but I didn't know. I didn't Like I said, my mind was not there. It was up at the hospital with my husband. And so I'm like, I just can't do this. I can't do this. Can y'all help me? And they're like, yeah, sure, we'll help you. We'll pack it up for you. We'll put it in our storage. We'll leave it in our storage for as long as you need it to be. But then $3,000 worth of our personal stuff come up missing. $3,000. Yes. So, you know, it's just material items, okay? 
but yet it was our stuff, our pretties, our my jewelry, you know, and and stuff. But yet they were like, "Oh, I'm sorry, we have no record of it or anything." I'm like, "Okay, you know what? Fine, whatever. At least I have my husband and my cat BJ is fine." So I mean, this would. What it it is what it is is what I told them, and so we we had that issue of they were kind enough to clean out our truck for us, but there were some people that worked in the company that stole some of our stuff, and um, it was that heartbreak that you know we had to deal with during that time, but at least he's still alive and breathing. And I can still touch him and hold his hand and kiss his face. And I'm like, okay, what what's more important here? You know? <laughs> so um, I did try to take legal action, but because of the statute of limitations, which was 90 days, had passed, um, there was no help in getting it back. Wow. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, that means we can keep we can collect that stuff again, you know. In 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 the face of of family emergency and and trauma also came salt in the room by somebody that actually worked for the company that you guys give praise to actually went well, it in, was, it in was your truck. Oh, it was well yeah, yeah total. It, it was some somebody yeah, from it was from t- total uh went in there and 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 stole about three thousand dollars worth of goods that's yep wow and see it was um you know job appreciation is in september and then we have august and uh august september october one month later you know he got a tv from job appreciation it was stolen you know, and we had just gotten on our feet to where we could get like a microwave and a new GPS and all of that was taken. A new C B, all of that was taken. But you know what? It's okay though, because that's just earthly material item. You know, we can replace that. I can't replace my husband. Him be, <laughs> him being you know? here is the most important thing. I, I again That's right. Again, Shelly would have seen or you would would it see i i commend you man i i commend you <laughs> definitely thank you i mean this yeah. this is the best conversation that i'm that i had <laughs> in a hot minute man thank you very much for this <laughs> so uh, okay so you guys are are again you're back with uh with variant um yes uh, how how is it how is it now getting back on track eight months later? It's it's wonderful. It's like we've never left in the beginning. I mean, they when we go to our home terminal, everybody's like, oh, there's Jason and hugging him. I'm so glad you're here, you know, and just loving on us like we're family, like we just went on vacation. I mean, it's like we never left in the beginning. And now I'm an advocate because I see some, you know, you see different drivers out there who are overweight, who are not fit, who who don't take care of themselves. And that's one thing that me and Jason are, you know, we're, we're, we take time for physical fitness. And, you know, that, that's one thing that wasn't a problem with Jason because there was no inklings of him having a heart attack before this scorpion stink. And so um, all the time, we brought, you know, I ask other drivers, I said, what is your fitness routine? You know, are you physically fit? Are you, how is your heart? How is your health? And I tell them about his story. And I tell them, you know, please, Please take care of yourselves over the road because, I mean, there's a lot of driving. You know, there's a lot of sitting. And I I think it's very important that people stay physically fit over the road. 
Facts. That that's why I, that's why I take advantage of my Planet Fitness membership. <laughs> I've been paying twenty right. been paying twenty four dollars for like the last umpteen years, and I I know I you know I know I went dark on them for at least a year of that, but yeah, I'm back in it. You know, at least uh, getting in there one day. You know, on my off day or something like that, get in there. And it only it only takes for a person like my age, you know, thirty minutes. I, I don't need to go in there and and try to get shredded or try to get ripped. I'm I'm right. just going in there just to, you know, just to keep the blood flowing. You know, trying to keep the health up a right. little bit. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a definite for me, man, because I'm I'm afraid. I am like literally afraid that I see these drivers out here that's like morbid morbid obese and they they walking around like like yeah this is a natural thing bro i mean you just you about to kill over in 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 a minute right you know right. you 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 walking from the fuel aisle to the front door and you already out of breath you got you out you of you, breath. you have exactly. to you have to hold the door for about a couple of minutes and and, and and catch your breath just from a short walk, my guy. That that should that should tell you That's something. That's not cool. That's not cool, right? That should yeah, tell it's, you something. It's that, scary. Yeah, that should tell you something right there. All right. So speaking, uh, segueing into that, um, you was at Shippensburg, uh, PA. They call yes. it. They mm -hmm. call it. Hope to see you again. Nice to meet you too. Uh, Dave said you could give me a lift to the uh, station. They called it Shitsburg, right across the street from uh, <laughs> right across the street from PNG. I never forget that place. Yes, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, That's so it. You you was at Shippensburg, and unfortunately, you 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 witnessed um, a situation that happened there. Can you can you go? Can you uh, tell us a story about what happened while you was there? Yes, um, we had uh, we were washing clothes and everything while we was at the terminal, and we noticed that an ambulance came and got one of our driver mates. And um, it was, uh, you know, I had asked, I said, "Is everything okay?" And and he's like, "I'm just having shortness of my breath." And then later, <laughs> later on, we found out that he had had a heart attack and had passed away. So the dot, uh, the highway patrol came and got his family's information to contact them to let them know that he had done passed away. And yes. and this happened when? Uh, about a week ago. Man. Yep. So you just it, it, so it, the driver that passed happened. away, the driver that passed away, you you literally had a conversation with him before he passed away? Yes. Mm -hmm. How was his, how was his, I know you, I know he, you say he, he, you know, how he was, but I mean, he didn't. He was pale. I mean, he was pale looking and it just wasn't, it just wasn't him, you know, because I knew him. Yep. Wow. They the ambulance came, took him to the hospital, and and that's where he went home at the hospital, pretty much. Right. How did did you did you know how long he he drove for the company? Um, I'm thinking about a year. I'm not for sure and certain, but I think it was about a year. Mm -hmm. Wow, man, I, I, you know that's. That is sad to to see to experience. Um, there was a there was a video um, of a TikToker talking about a driver was in the Love's Fuel Island, and um, mm -hmm. he passed out. He he passed out behind the wheel. His foot was still on the still on the pedal. Um, he ran into the back of the truck, uh, in the back of the truck that was in front of him, 
and the wheels just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and that what alerted the other drivers you know to see what's going on like yo bro what's what's happening so that has, they, it happens they, more than you think yeah they went over it really does they they went over and you know they had to bust out the window you know to get to him because he was he 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 was passed out on the wheel and uh and yeah he 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 pretty much went home right there you know he he, he was on you know he you know unalive right there in 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 the truck yep. in the fuel island just waiting to waiting to get some fuel and 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 yeah I mean drivers man we we don't know when it's our time man I mean it's you know and it's 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 happening more than more than often like you know Shelly said and it's you know it's not just not you know not just your husband that experienced a heart attack not just you know your co your 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 driver mate that just passed yeah. from having a heart attack and now you know the video of this driver you know had you know had a heart attack or or whatever it was that you know that took him out drivers we right. we really got to we, we really got to you know take care of ourselves you know drivers is going in the back you know when they you know not feeling well they'd be like okay I'll I'll just lay it down for a minute and they'll just go in the back and lay it down and two days later they're found in you know in their you know in their truck gone you know I right. I, I send you know I send my mom's location like on my cell phone I got an Android team Android and uh okay you know I got <laughs> yeah. I got a location uh you know, when you go into the text message and all like that, it's it's a location uh, symbol. Mm -hmm. And I, I send my mom, I send my mom's my location all the time. So just in case she gives me a call and she can't get a hold of me, at least she can go to the 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 Google Maps to see where I'm at. And she can call, exactly. you know, call uh, where I'm at so they can come out and do a, you know, do a hospitality oh. check on me. Yeah, no, we we were down in Mississippi, um, down around Biloxi, and we had pulled in for our 34, and we had known that this driver next to us had been there a while because his tires were already deflated. And there was no movement in the truck. And kind of went into loves, and I asked him, I said, you know, this truck driver with the company, blah, 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 whatever. Have y'all heard any information about him? Is he in his truck? And he was in there. Um, they said that he was sick and that he needed to go get his Ambien from CVS. And um, that was all, that, that was two days before we had came. And we had been watching his truck, you know, because it's obvious when there's movement in the truck, you can tell. And there hadn't been any movement, and I started to get nervous and worried. And so I called the company, and I said, have you heard from this driver? And they said that they hadn't, and so they called uh, to do a welfare check on him. And he had left a note that said, I have COVID. I didn't want to take it home to my family, and all of his Ambien was gone. All of his Ambien was gone. And so he just said that he was going to go home. And I had to, I had to, uh, I had to see that right next door to us. So, I mean, check on your driver mate, check on your friends, check on your family, because it's a hard life out here, you know, being away from your family, your kids, and you, you just got to, you got to love on each other. You know, one thing that I do, because the pandemic was so bad on me, just as a, as a truck wife, you know, um, I started making worry dolls and leaving them at truck stops everywhere we went, you know, making them out of things that I had on board. And I would leave them to just say, you know, if you have any worries, 
take this doll and place it under your pillow and give all your worries to this doll. And then all your worries will be gone. I mean, yeah, it's just a, a symbol of somebody that cares, you know. And, uh, you know, there's so many people. I started that back in 2022, I mean, 2021. And, you know, people to this day still talk about my worry dolls. And if you go on Facebook, you can see the worry dolls that I have made. I've made over 200 worry dolls that I've left at different truck stops all around uh, the United States. And um, my, my husband, we're here at Walmart now because I've got to get some more stuff to continue to make my worry dolls for truck drivers and, and people that find them at truck stops. So, I mean, it's just one way to let people know that there is actual people that actually care, you know, still out there in the world. All right. All yeah. right. Shelly with a C, y'all. <laughs> Man, let, let, me add, let, let me touch back. Let, let me touch back to where you actually had to drive. So when you was, t you, you was taking your, your husband, was you driving the truck? When he told you to drive no. the truck, or you? Oh, so this was no. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we. It was our personal vehicle. Oh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah, but I, I would imagine you in in a situation like you know, like your husband, if y'all was on the truck, being that the truck is an automatic, I'm I'm sure you would have got behind the wheel and and got him to the hospital, right? Um, yeah, I mean, certain situations, um, I'm, I would have gotten him there somehow or another. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Shelly would have seen, man, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> conversation. I'm, I'm, Thank I'm you. glad that we was able to, uh, check back in with each other, man. I mean, you know, we've been, absolutely. we've been friends, you know, we've been friends on Facebook for, for a long time, uh, you know, even after our first conversation that we had with each other a while back, but you know, this, this right here is a beautiful catch up. Um, you know, I, my condolences goes out to the driver, uh, your, uh, your driver mate, my condolences goes out to that driver that was in the, uh, fuel Island and, uh, and, and, you know, well wishes for your, your husband in the coming years, man. Thank you so much. We we try and stay healthy as much as we can over the road, and we I actually cook over the road too. So since then, since this heart attack, um, we made a lot of different life decisions. So cooking over the road, we're not eating at McDonald's or those other places. So um, he's actually inside getting groceries now for me to cook breakfast in the morning. So. <laughs> Yeah.